Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our fifth lesson on the fifth topic of Form 4 which is called Electromagnetic Induction. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day which states that we would accomplish much more things in life if we didn't think of them as impossible. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today I'm looking at further examples involving calculations on transformers. So our first question reads that a transformer with 1,200 turns in the primary circuit so and uh, 120 turns in the secondary circuit has its primary circuit connected to a 400 uh, volts alternating current source. So it is found that when the heater is connected to the secondary circuit, it produces heat at a rate of 600 watt. Assuming that the transformer is 100% efficient, determine uh, the part A, the voltage in the secondary coil, the current in the primary coil, and the current in the secondary coil. So the key thing, first of all, we highlight the key information in the question. So we are told that the transformer with 1,200 turns in the primary circuit. So the number of turns in the primary circuit is 1,200 turns. Then it also has 120 turns in the secondary circuit. So number of turns in the secondary circuit is 120 uh, turns. Uh, has its primary circuit connected to a 400 volt alternating current source. So this is the, uh, that is the voltage in the primary circuit. So the voltage in the primary circuit or the primary coil is 400 volts. Then we are told that it is found that when a heater is connected to the secondary circuit, it produces heat at a rate of 600 watts. So this is the power in the secondary circuit. So power in the secondary circuit is 600 watts. Then we are told that assuming that the transformer is 100% efficient, so 100% efficient simply means that the efficiency of the transformer is 100% and therefore this transformer is actually ideal. So ideal transformer simply means that it has no energy losses. So, that, so if there is no energy loss in an ideal transformer, it simply means that the power input must be equal to the power output. Remember, power input will always be equal to power output if and only if the transformer is ideal or if the transformer is 100% efficient. But for example, if the transformer is something like 95% efficient, then you cannot say that power input will be equal to power output because we have 5% of the energy that will get lost. But whenever you are told that the transformer is ideal or that it is 100% efficient, then in that case, the power input must be equal to the power output. So we are told to determine uh, the voltage in the secondary circuit. So because we are given the number of turns both in the primary and the secondary coil, then we are given the voltage in the primary coil and the, they want us to find the voltage in the secondary coil, we are going to use what we call the turns rule, which states that the voltage in the secondary coil or the secondary circuit divided by voltage in the primary circuit must be equal to number of turns in the secondary circuit divided by the number of turns in the primary circuit. So I'm going to substitute what I already have so that I solve for the unknown. So voltage in the secondary circuit, that is what we are looking for. Voltage in the primary circuit, we are given as 400 uh, volts. The number of turns in the secondary circuit, we have 1000, that is secondary has 120 uh, turns. The number of turns in the primary circuit is 1200 turns. So I'm going to make voltage in the secondary coil to be subject of my formula. So to achieve that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 400 so that I remain with voltage in the secondary coil being equal to 120 turns divided by 1200 turns times 400. So if you compute this on your calculator, you will obtain voltage in the secondary coil as being 40 volts. Then part B, they want us to find the current in the primary circuit. Now from the information provided, we don't have any current in this particular information. Therefore, you cannot use the relationship between uh, voltage in the secondary coil and primary coil or the number of turns in the secondary coil and primary coil to find the current because you are not given any value of the current. But because we are told that the transformer is 100% efficient, it simply means that and we are given the power output or the power in the secondary coil to be 600 watt, it simply means that the power in the primary coil will also be 600 watt. The reason being the transformer is 100% efficient, therefore no energy is getting lost and therefore the power input must be equal to the power output. So since the transformer is ideal or since the transformer is 100% efficient, 
we can simply conclude that the power input must be equal to the power output and of course we are given the power output as 600 watt therefore the power in the primary coil which is equal to the power output which is also equal to the power input must be equal to 600 watt but from uh, a given topic in form 3 which was called uh, uh, that is heating effect of an electric current we did derive the relationship between power voltage and the current so we said that the formula for the electrical power can be given by the voltage multiplied by the current therefore if we want to find the voltage in the primary coil we just need to have the power in the primary coil and also the voltage in the primary coil so you can see from our question we are given the voltage in the primary coil as 400 volts we have also uh, concluded that the power in the primary coil will be equal to the power in the that is the power output which is 600 watt because the transformer that we are dealing with is an ideal one or it has an efficiency of a hundred percent therefore if i make a current in the primary coil subject of the formula I'll simply divide both sides of this formula by voltage in the primary coil so current in the primary coil will be equal to the power in the primary coil divided by the voltage in the primary coil so the power in the primary coil which is equals to uh, the power output or the power in the secondary coil because the transformer is 100 percent efficient is actually 600 watt as we have shown here then the voltage in the primary coil we are given as 400 volts so if you take 600 watt divided by 400 volts you'll actually obtain 1.5 amperes as the current in the primary circuit or in the primary coil then part c they want us to find the current in the secondary circuit again i'm going to use the relationship uh, power output or power is equals to vi so this one is strictly for the electrical power so we can take the voltage multiplied by the current so because we already have the the power in the secondary coil which we are given as 600 watt then we also have the voltage in the secondary coil which we have computed from our part a as 40 volts i'm simply going to make the current in the secondary coil to be subject of the formula by dividing both sides of this equation by voltage in the secondary coil therefore current in the secondary coil is equal to power in the secondary coil over voltage in the secondary coil of course power in the secondary coil is 600 watt we were given from the question or the power in the uh, secondary coil yeah is 600 watt then divided by the voltage in the secondary coil we have already computed it from part a as 40 volts so if you take 600 divided by 40 you'll obtain the current in the secondary coil to be 15 amperes next our second example reads that the figure below represents a transformer with 500 turns in the primary and 50 turns in the secondary coil so the turns are wound uniformly on the core then the length of the p q and q r are as indicated given that the primary coil is connected to a 240 volts uh, a c source determine part a the potential difference across p r so you can see the that is the primary coil has 500 turns then it is connected to a 240 uh, alternating current source then the secondary coil has 50 uh, turns we are told that there are 50 turns so we are told part a to determine the potential difference across pr so remember pr represents the whole length of the uh, secondary coil then of course we also have this particular whole length of the primary coil so we are going to find the the voltage across the secondary coil so that voltage will be equivalent to the total length of pr so because we are given the the voltage in the primary coil which we are given as 240 volts we are also given the number of turns in the secondary coil which are 50 turns we are also given the number of turns in the primary coil which are 500 turns we are simply going to use uh, the turns rule to find the voltage in the secondary coil which will be equivalent to the voltage across the whole length pr because pr is equivalent to the whole length of the secondary coil which has 50 turns so from the turns rule if i take voltage of the secondary coil divided by voltage in the primary coil that must be equal to number of turns in the secondary coil over number of turns in the primary coil so voltage in the secondary coil divided by the voltage in the primary coil i'm given as 240 uh, volts then the number of turns in the secondary coil i'm given as 50 turns number of turns in the primary coil is 500 turns so if i make voltage in the secondary to be subject of the formula i'll simply multiply both sides of this equation by 240 
so that voltage in the secondary will be 50 over 500 multiplied by 240 volts. So of course, voltage in the secondary will simply give us 24 volts. Then we are saying that the potential difference across PR. Now remember, PR is the whole of the secondary coil. So the potential difference across PR is equals to the uh, potential difference or the voltage across the secondary coil, which of course is equal to 24 volts. Then part B, we are told to find the potential difference across PR. Now remember PR we are given as one centimeter, then the total length of Q, that is QR, we are given as two centimeters. So that means the total length of PR will be equal to two centimeters plus one centimeter. So because we have computed the voltage in the secondary coil, which is equals to the potential difference across the whole secondary coil is PR, we shall simply say that PR, which is equals to one centimeter plus two centimeters, which gives us three centimeters. So we shall say if three centimeters are equivalent to, that is three centimeters, which is the length PR, is equivalent to voltage in the secondary coil, what about the length of PQ? Because we are told to find the potential difference across PQ. So we are going to say that if three centimeters, which is the total length of uh, PR, which is equivalent to uh, the voltage, in the secondary coil. So we are going to say that if three centimeters is equivalent to 24 volts, remember 24 volts is the voltage in the whole secondary coil. Then the whole secondary coil has a total length of PR, which is three centimeters. So if three centimeters is equivalent to 24 volts, what about the length of PQ? Because we are told to find the potential difference across PQ. So if three centimeters is equals to, or is equivalent to 24 volts, what about one centimeter, which is the length of uh, PQ? So potential difference across PQ will be equal to uh, the length of the PQ, which is three centimeters, that is one centimeter from the diagram, divided by the total length of uh, the secondary coil, which is PR, which is two plus one, which gives us three centimeters, times the voltage in the secondary coil, which is actually 24 centimeters. So if three centimeters is to 24, what about one centimeter? So that will be one centimeter over three centimeters times 24 volts, which gives us eight volts. So that is the potential difference across PR. Then part C, they want us to find the potential difference across QR. So remember QR has a length of two centimeters. So we shall say if the total length, which was PR is three centimeters, what about two centimeters? So if three centimeters is equivalent to 24 volts, what about two centimeters, which is the length of QR. So the potential difference across QR will be two centimeters, the length of QR divided by the total length in the secondary coil, which is three centimeters, multiplied by the total voltage or potential difference in the secondary coil, which we computed as 24 uh, volts. So if you take two over three times 24 volts, you will obtain the potential difference across QR to be 16 volts. Then lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that we would accomplish much more things in life if we didn't think of them as impossible. So the quote is encouraging us to believe that everything is possible if we dedicate our time, energy, and resources on them. Remember that the greatest discovery in human life is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude and character. And lastly, recall that your success or failure in anything depends mainly on whether you truly believe that your goals are realistically possible. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.